two. Good afternoon. I, Ro Hassan, now call to order the March 16th, um, 2023 meeting of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. To conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will save their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Rosenberg if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Rosenberg, will you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Certainly. Ms. Pomfrey? Present. Ms. Hassan? Present. Ms. Lichter? Present. And Ms. Rosenberg, will you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Ms. Charlie Green? Present. Mr. Baysmore? Present. Mr. Korn? Present. Thank you so much. And the first item on our agenda is a legislative update. And for that, I call on Mr. Baysmore. Uh, good evening and thank you, Chair, Chair Roa, uh, for the introduction. I um, wanted just to highlight a couple of, of dates before we get into the actual bills that we'll be covering uh, today. Um, number one, the crossover deadline is this Monday, March the 20th. And by that, I mean um, on the House side, all bills that were filed uh, must be completed and cross over to the Senate um, by Monday, March 20th. Uh, the same for the uh, Senate side. Now, what this means is, is that those bills that cross over has a very good chance of getting through the process and, um, um, you know, getting to the finish line. Bills still can be filed after the crossover date, but it's highly, highly unlikely that those bills will be able to get through the process in the amount of time that we have now. Typically, they will be referred to a joint uh, subcommittees and things of that sort, um, which tax on time. And typically, if a bill is, doesn't make it a crossover, it, it literally runs out of time uh, to be heard. So for the next two or three days, this through, through the weekend and Monday, there'll be a lot of movement and a lot of pushing of, of, of the bill so that they can make crossover. So we keep our eye on that really closely. We have a better idea after Monday what bills have crossed over and be able to put, you know, uh, have a good prediction as to what bills would, um, you know, pay, you know, pass or fail uh, in the process. Um, also, the session ends um, April the 10th. That's about um, less than a month, about a month less in the, in, in the legislature. And there were hundreds of bills that we've been tracking um, this legislative session, um, education bills. So it's been very busy. But um, our committee, which has been very active, and um, our school board has been very supportive and engaged in this process, and our, our administration as well. So with that, I would start with our first bill that we're, that we're tracking. Uh, we have about 10 bills that we're going to give updates on, and then we'll take any question and that, you know, questions or, or, or issues. Um, our first bill is HB 56. Uh, and Senate Bill 389. This bill has been cross-filed, uh, which is a good thing. Um, doesn't have to worry about crossover. Uh, MABE is, has taken a non-position on this bill, um, and it's actually the uh, Dual Language Education Bill, uh, Teacher Certification uh, Program Implementation and, st and, and Study. Uh, the State Department of Education, this bill is actually would require the State Department of Education to develop guidelines for uh, dual language immersion programs um, in public schools and also uh, convene a work group uh, to report back to the uh, uh, General Assembly on um, uh, dual, dual language certification programs. So um, it had a House hearing uh, in January. Um, the Senate hearing was um, 
um, March the 1st. So we'll continue to monitor that bill as it makes its way uh, on the on the Senate side. Um, our next bill is the anaphylactic food allergy bill, which I know we all are uh, keeping an eye on and very con you know, concerned with as HB 78. Uh, this bill also had a cross file, SB 120. And with this bill, it would require each county board, which, which, which is you, Board of Education, to adopt, implement, and publish certain guidelines for reducing the risk to students with anaphylactic um, allergies. And it would also require each school uh, to develop a system to disclose the major food allergens contained in the food served in the schools. Um, this bill uh, was heard on, on the um, um, Senate side, uh, had its first reading in, in, in EHE and, and also in the House. It continues to move, move forward. Uh, MAPE supports this bill and uh, we'll continue to monitor this one as well at the crossover. Uh, third bill is um, an interesting bill. It's uh, cross filed as well. Um, HB 85 and uh, Senate Bill 206. Um, this is a collective bargaining bill um, for certified employees uh, around class size. Class size. Currently, bargaining units cannot negotiate um, class size in their in their negotiations and and in collective bargaining agreements. What this bill would do would actually allow uh, the 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 bargaining collective bargaining units to um, negotiate class size. Uh, MABE is uh, opposing this bill and has testified on this bill. Um, it had a House hearing back in February uh, and a Senate hearing, so it is cross filed and we are definitely following and monitoring this this bill as 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 well. OK, board members, do you have any other any questions thus far regarding any of the bills mentioned? OK, hmm. hearing none, Mr. Baysmore, you feel free to continue. Thank you, Chair Roy. Appreciate you. Um, and this one is of concern to everyone. <laughs> HB 119, I think we all we all are aware of HB 119. And uh, it's actually as a cross file with uh, Senate Bill 199. Um, this is the um, a bill that made actually had a call to action on, uh, which means they contacted all local um, school boards and asked them to uh, join them in opposing this bill. This it's a curriculum bill that was um, just frankly a you know a bridge too far in um, taking um, the authority and control of curriculum away from boards, duly elected and appointed board members. Um, those decisions um, is, is the foundation of what you do around curriculum and uh, the way the bill was written, it would it would have given um, too much authority to um, uh, MSDE um, in curriculum. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, may um, oppose this bill. Um, our board, you 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 guys voted on this the other night. Uh, Chair Roy made a motion and um, Chair Lichter has been involved in this as well. I um, want to thank them. Um, we were able to get a letter um, sent to the uh, Ways and Means Committee, our Senate, uh, Baltimore County Senate delegation and House delegation um, saying that we oppose this bill. So um, we'll continue to monitor it. Um, this bill is being brought by the um, uh, Delegate Atterbury, who's the chair. And, you know, that's a, you know, six, six, you know, just wanted to highlight that, that she's the chair of uh, Ways and Means. So it's had a, a hearing uh, in the in the House. Uh, we'll monitor it uh, on, on, on the Senate side and we'll let you know when the, when when there's a hearing, if anyone wants to testify or or, or, or you know, come down and testify on that particular bill. Um, so I'll pause on this one because it was a lot of lot of discussion about this one. If anybody have any questions. My only yeah, and oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, no, you're going. No, you're fine. No, I should have I should have asked first. I apologize, Roma. No, you're fine. No, no worries at all. Uh, my question is only I know we sent a letter as a board, but at this point, uh, does it help to send anything individually or should we only be addressing this as a board, collective board? 
I think as a collective board um, was the best way to do this. That that shows, you know, unanimity and that we're all together in this. Um, interestingly enough, the the Maryland State Board of Education um, opposed this bill as well, which was, you know, that was significant. And so there seems to be um, uh, in, in all the local local jurisdictions, uh, you know, um, everybody's kind of in lockstep on this one. So it'll be interesting to see as we monitor this bill, what happens as it moves moves forward. I think the intent intentions were good, um, but I think it just went a little too far in taking away that local authority, which is your DNA and, you know, around curriculum. And that's one of your pillars. So we'll monitor this one. Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Um, thank you, Mr. Raysmore. This bill, um, let's remember that it was wildly amended. Um, it started off as, you know, just a bill about a health curriculum, and then it was changed. Um, mm -hmm. And with those details came a lot of control, a lot of um, basically, you know, breaking apart the reason why boards of education exist. Like our, our main goal is teaching and learning. Um, that bill would remove autonomy from that. So that's one of the reasons and motivators behind why we made that motion on Tuesday. And one of the reasons why it's so important that we just, you know, we hold this unified front that we collectively and adamantly oppose this. Um, so, of course, if there's any action that we can do, it'll just all be as a as a collective board. Um, just, you know, to make sure that we're all on the same page and how we're discussing things. Absolutely, absolutely. So if anybody testifies, um, there'll be testifiers rep representing our Baltimore County Board of Education, which is which is good. That's a that's a good thing. OK. All right, thank you, Chair. Exactly. I'll move to the next bill. Um, HB 137 um, is is uh, um, a bill by uh, Delegate Grammer, actually, and it, it the bill is providing um, that a staff member of a school or an acting acting in an official capacity is not sip, um, liable for personal injury in civil in civil cases. Um, you know, if a teacher or staff or principal or someone intervenes uh, in an altercation between you know whoever it may be, children or, or at the school, um, that they're not liable for for civil penalties, carrying out their due diligence, trying to break up, uh, you know, or um, you know, um, intervene in, in, in a fight or, or altercation. Um, this this bill is supported by by Mabe as well. It's a common sense bill uh, to give protection to teachers and staff, and when they're intervening in in uh, you know fights and other altercations at you know on the school property. So um, this bill is in the Senate. Uh, we're going to continue to monitor this monitor this uh, this bill as well. Uh, let's Welcome see. Board members, any any questions, board members, on this one? Okay, hearing none. Okay, thank you. And a uh, couple of local bills. Our next couple of bills are local bills. Um, the first one is HB 175, which is uh, student member voting. Uh, and when I say local bill, meaning it's just pertaining to Baltimore County. It's not a statewide bill. And so this bill will authorize the student member of the Baltimore County Board of Education um, to vote on capital on the capital and operating budget. Um, I just got a text a few minutes ago um, that the bill uh, moved favorably out of uh, ways and means today. And so it continues to move move in the legislative process. So it, anyone any comments or, or questions about this particular bill? Me, per I mean, personally, you know, I'm obviously very hopeful that this passes. Um, I think I think we have good energy so far um, regarding this bill. So um, I know I personally testified on this one, um, but yeah, so this one, this one is, is going to be exciting to see whether or not those rights are provided to the next student member, so. Okay, excellent, excellent. So we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on this one and make sure we report Report out on that one, and there's a there's a second local bill as well, which which I I call it you know <laughs> the fix it bill actually, and we're all living this right now, all of our board members um in our system, uh this is HB two ten um, 
It's the Board of Education member elections and appointments. And uh, what this bill does is require that the seven elected members of the school board um, be elected in gubernatorial election years, which we are. So that doesn't change. You were all duly elected in the gubernatorial election, which is fine. Um, but what it does is, is, is it shifts the four appointed members to the uh, presidential election cycle. Um, and in that way, you do not have a lame duck governor that can't appoint board members. And we wind up in the situation that we're currently living in right now, waiting for the, the duly elected governor to make the appointment. And, and so this, this would fix that. Um, the one caveat is, is that uh, if, it, if it, and this, this was in ways and means today as well, and it moved favorably. Um, the one caveat is, is that the appointments that would be made uh, instead of being made for four years initially would be two, two years because the presidential election is in two years. But those uh, uh, members that were appointed could be reappointed again if they so choose. They may say, you know, two years is enough and I, you know, don't want to be reappointed or they may say I want to be reappointed. And so they would be considered in the legislation. It says that they would, you know, definitely be considered for that, that, that reappointment. Um, I think that's, uh, was there something else in this bill? No, I think that, yeah, I think that was it. And so anybody had any comments on this? Cause you're actually living this right now, so. Anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? No, I mean, we desperately need yeah, it. Right, we're yeah, living. Agreed. Need, right, cause right now we need those four to help us with the superintendent search, but. Tony's working on that with me. Yes, ma'am. Not only that, I, I think it also gives some, when you're kind of doing that switch over, you still have some uh, members who aren't brand new. So even though, uh, you know, we're, we've been here a little while, I still feel like we're going to have a mostly new board. Um, so I think that helps with that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, I, I like it because it's staggered. You know, most boards, you know, they have people come on at different times. You, you know, if, if it stayed like it is now, you would always have a wholesale seven elected and four members appointed at the same time. So this staggers that where you keep, you know, you don't keep the um, experience experience there. So I think it's a good. Well, we all think it's a good bill. I call it the fix it bill. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. um, OK, um, our next bill is HB 294. Um, this is a due process proceedings for children with disabilities uh, burden of proof bill. Uh, it's cross filed with Senate Bill 926 um, as well. It has had it had a House hearing and the Senate hearing is upcoming on. Uh, uh, well, wait a minute. What is today's day? It actually had a Senate hearing yesterday at 1 p.m. Um, and Mabe opposes this bill. It shifts the burden of proof for. Um, due process proceedings from um, the individuals who's follow, filing the complaint and shifts it to the school system. Um, so this bill will will be following as well. Um, there, there was a local bill. Is this the one with the local bill? Hold on a sec. Yes, OK. This bill also had a, a, a local bill, HB uh, 381, um, that did not move in our in our House delegation. So that bill is not moving forward, but the but the statewide uh, bill is. So we'll keep an eye on this one as well as as it moves through the process. And again, Mabe is opposing uh, this this particular bill as well. Um, OK, HB 343, uh, public school athletics basketball schedule. This is a interesting bill. Um, Mabe opposes this bill. This bill actually would allow in basketball uh, to have um, additional games or tournaments after the season. Um, our athletic department, uh, BCPS athletic department opposed this bill as well because it takes the authority away from the local jurisdictions. And I never can pronounce this, it's the MPSS, 
MSA governing body, the uh, the Maryland Public Sports Something uh, Association, uh, which which um, oversees and is the governing body of, of 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 the athletic programs. What this bill would do would take that um, you know authority away from them in in managing uh, their schedules because when you when you have uh, these schedules and you change them, there's almost a rippling effect over a lot of different things. And so you have to be really cognizant of a lot of things before you start tinkering with um, um, schedules. And this was uh, narrowly focused on basketball. And the prevailing thought is that it will probably start at basketball, but then it would move to other areas, you know, other sports, if I mean, and, um, you know, and, and, and it wouldn't be good for the system. So um, again, may oppose this. Our school system uh, opposed it, and we're going to continue to watch this bill as well. Thank you. Okay, awesome. And I know the next one is. If anyone has any questions. Oh, this. <laughs> I'm going to turn the meeting over to Christina at this point. <laughs> <Thank God. laughs> uh, this is. I, I couldn't help but think about you. Um, Christina Pumphrey, when when this for this bill, this is HB 514, the Maryland Meals for Achievement in Classroom Breakfast program um, that that you brought up and actually added to our list when we first started our legislative committee meetings um, um this year. Um, but uh, there's a lot that has happened since then. So if you want to comment on this bill and 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 your you know what you've been working on as well, that'd be great. I would just say it just. Even though I was ex so excited about CEP, um, this is also important because this um, allows students to eat breakfast after the bell. So um, it's sort of in the classroom instead of students that may arrive late or um, for whatever reason um, can still get breakfast in the classroom and CEP doesn't allow for that. So that's the difference in this. So there, although we've implemented CEP, this is still also an important bill. Yes, it is. It is. And they work hand in hand. And there's actually money tied to this uh, $12 million in the annual budget um, from the governor's office that will be dedicated for this. So as we all know, you know, every great idea has a price tag. And so um, it's just great news, great news. And thank you for your work on this. You know, this has been a passion of yours, so thank you. This is, it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And thank you, uh, Ms. Humphrey, for all the work that you've done with providing our students access to food and regular access to that nutrition. So you are absolutely such so amazing with it. So a huge shout out to you. I'm super hopeful and excited for this bill. And I know our next one is about family and medical leave insurance program. It is. It is, Cheryl. And um, this is Senate Bill 828 and HB House Bill, I'm sorry, 988. Uh, MAPE supports this bill as well. Um, this bill will require the state um, to pay for certain contributions for employers and employees um, who have, you know, to take leave because, you know, a medical, you know, emergencies in their family uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, so it would add, you know, give them benefits in that area, uh, this insurance program. So uh, it's it's a compassionate bill. You know, uh, people have things that happen in their family and loved ones get sick and ill and have to do certain things. So this is an insurance program that they're setting up that would, um, you know, help those families that are in certain, you know, being, being a certain, you know, would need need that particular um, uh, support. Uh, Mabe May definitely supports this bill. It's uh, uh, had a second reading and passed in the Senate and uh, the House hearings uh, is an uh, economic matter. So again, uh, we'll monitor this bill and, uh, you know, it's, it's a compassionate bill for families. Board members, any comments about this one? Okay, hearing none. Back to you, Mr. Bazemore. Mm -hmm, thank you. And um, Senate Bill 869. This is a concentration of poverty uh, grant program um, that uh, MAPE, MAPE supports as well. Um, this, this would increase the funding and resources uh, for school districts who have a high um, concentration of poverty. In the in the district, so it's it's saying that they're going to have additional funding, additional resources that they can tap in, into through a grant program 
that would help those schools out who are, you know, experiencing this uptick, especially after what we've been through the last couple of years, um, this, this concentration of poverty that uh, school systems are dealing with. And uh, so excellent bill. Again, um, I always say every great idea has a price tag and uh, it's actually um, the, the um, Senate president, uh, Bill Ferguson, is sponsoring this bill. So that always means a lot. And, uh, you know, definitely want to support this, that extra support and resources for those schools. With high poverty, so we'll, we're definitely monitoring this one. I don't anticipate any issues with this, but we'll 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 continue to monitor. Um, our last and final bill um, is about school safety and 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 uh, student well-being. Uh, this bill actually is uh, it requires the governor uh, to include in his budget an appropriation of twenty million dollars. You know, there as we all know, there's been a lot of attention on school safety and well-being the last few years, and uh, so. What this bill does is is again appropriate the money where school systems can uh, through grants um, can you know can enhance their school safety programs or um, you know be able to tap into other resources uh, to make our schools more safe for everyone uh, students you know um, teachers families and communities uh, again um, MAPE supports this bill it did have a Senate hearing in in the Education, Energy and Environment Committee. Um, we know that there's been some new numbers with the budget that just came in um, that the governor submitted uh, where they had to write down. Uh, I don't know if I, I forget the exact amount, but it was a few hundred millions of dollars, which actually will impact a lot of bills that have what they call a fiscal note. Um, this is a bill with a fiscal note, $20 million. Um, but what is going for school, you know, enhanced school safety and uh, uh, programs and grants, um, we'll just have to monitor this to see if uh, it actually passes. Um, but again, MAVE supports this bill. And as you know all too well, you know, as board members, um, this is, you know, one of the number one topics is school safety right now and trying to figure out ways to make our schools safer in communities. So we'll, we'll monitor that one as well. Uh, that was the bills that we're we're following. Again, there's hundreds of bills that we're following, along with Mabe and and Pazam and and other groups. It's it's been very busy. It's been interesting um, in a lot of ways because we had a lot of new elected officials, delegate senators. Uh, there was an administrative change. We have a new governor. You know, new cabinet members and all of that. So, you know, with that is you know um, comes you know challenges, but also you know, a kind of sense of, uh, you know, excitement and, and, and a different different type of energy. Um, wanted to also give a plug into uh, uh, Chair Roa and the students who came to Annapolis the other day and uh, uh, went on on the tour. And I, Chair Roa, if you were going to talk about this, I don't want to take that away from you, but it was it was great, great seeing you and the students there. And, uh, and I think you had a chance to interact with the governor, if I'm not mistaken. We did, yeah, that is correct. Um, so the Baltimore County Student Council took an advocacy day trip down to Annapolis. We spent um, a good few hours um, walking around the state house. Um, we did interact with some of our local elected officials, such as Delegate Eversole, Delegate Pasteur, Senator Brooks, um, all of whom are absolutely wonderful at what they do. But it was it was great for students to see. Um, government in action and, and see what the floor looks like and what deliberation looks like. So um, I think that was an absolutely amazing opportunity. I, I'm personally like I, I love having students over at Annapolis and, and being able to see what's happening in real time. So as we're talking about it over here, we can also see, you know, the same decisions that we're making at a different level for, you know, our delegates and our state senators. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh... I think that ends my report, uh, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, next on the agenda is closing remarks by you, so I, I will turn it over to you at this point. Okay, awesome. And um, before I give, I share any announcements, do any board members have any, any additional questions, any further business? I'm good. Okay, hearing none. 
All right. Um, so the last item on the agenda is announcements. The next Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee meeting will be on April 20th, 2023 from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Hearing no further business, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, everyone.